Reef Teats is sponsored by Brightwell Aquatics and Bulk Reef Supply. Today we're going over the build of my custom dirt frog vivarium. What's going on guys, Devin from Reef Teats or today, Leaf Teats. And the last update on my office tour, there was a ton of interesting questions on the vivarium. So today we're gonna dig into just how I built it. So we couldn't find the perfect wood to use for a tree, so we decided to make one out of PVC. Uh, we're gonna use some of the Great Stuff expanding foam and kind of coat it all in foam. The PVC is basically just the bones for structure. And then after that, we will carve it out and turn it into a tree. So we are just about ready to do the foam. Uh, we lined this with parchment paper because the great stuff foam in theory should not stick to it. So hopefully that is correct. And we're going to cover this whole thing in foam. Um, tape, painter's tape did not work to hold this. Actually, it did work. A little pro tip is using magnets. So if you want to try and stick anything with parchment paper, magnets are the trick. After this we're going to do a layer of silicone on top and we want to get rid of all the shiny foam because the silicone is not going to stick to it so we're going to go over and just scrape the whole thing with sandpaper we can either use a razor to chop it off you can power sand it do it by hand but you basically just want to get rid of any of the shiny bits kind of like that and that's going to allow the silicone to adhere to it now we got a tree basically carved out um, i did razor off the bottom inch or so just to keep the foam out of the drainage layer um, this is just this is kind of preventative. Now for this, I'm going to peel off that last little bit and we are going to coat this in silicone and then in cocoa fiber. Now I did pick up a Graham safe silicone. Um, supposedly GE1 is safe, but I've heard mixed things on it. So I decided to pick up aquarium stuff to be safe. So we got this in black. So we're going basically going to smear the whole thing and black silicone and then we're going to press in cocoa fiber. Now in order for the cocoa fiber to stick to the silicone well it has to be very dry so I did throw it on some cookie sheets in the oven for about half an hour 45 minutes on low just to make sure it's really dry first. Now of course my phone died as I was siliconing it but basically smothered the silicone over the whole structure and then pressed in cocoa fiber. Um, in this clip I actually flipped the tree upside down just to give me an opportunity to get all the bottom little bits that I missed when doing it right side up. Once the tree itself was done I did a very similar process with some random chunks of rope from the dollar store where I smothered it in aquarium safe silicone and then pressed in cocoa fiber and I use this to make all the vines just to give the tree a lot more depth and texture. Next on the list was making a glass top. Now I got a glass shop to cut the glass for me, cost about 20 bucks, relatively inexpensive. With dart frogs you do want to keep a fairly high humidity so I left about a two inch gap and the rest of the top was glass. Now I started by drilling the holes for the misters um, so I, in two separate corners I drilled about a half inch hole in order to fit the mister nozzles and once I was done this I also drilled a hole in the bottom of the vivarium itself to add a half inch bulkhead and this is just for my drainage in the system. Big chunk of this is the custom furniture. I didn't want to just have it sitting on a stand in the corner of my room because it wouldn't have fit in very well. So I had my buddy Derek build me a custom shelf that wraps around it and give it a really cool built-in look. I designed this in SketchUp and then he had it built and I must say it turned out awesome. Now with everything fully built and the vivarium on it, um, it was time to add my drainage later. So I had the tree inside and on the very bottom I used some aqua mesh. Um, so this is the fine version and it creates my drainage later. It's super light to move it. Now on top of that I just have some window screen for drainage and then on top of that I can add my substrate. Now remember that glass top with those holes we drilled? Well those holes were for the misting system. So in each corner of the top I have different misters. I put them in opposite corners because I wanted them really good coverage but I also wanted to kind of hide them. I didn't want them in the main corner where you kind of see the two sides of the tank. Now for the top we have an inch or two of space that we left for ventilation. This kind of creates the chimney effect out and I 3D printed these little kind of grills that cover the gap and inside of that I put in the little noceum kind of micro mesh and that keeps all the fruit flies inside and they're removable just in case I ever want to change something on it. Now we also have a little 40 mils fan inside of here just to kind of keep all the humidity and keep the glass nice and clear so thank you to Thomas for that design. 
Lighting wise, we have the Ecotech Radeon XR30. Now this is a freshwater aquarium light and it works absolutely amazing for plants. You can wrap it up, down, change the spectrum throughout the day. Um, I did hang it off the top of the cabinet so it gives a nice clean install. And in the top corner, I have a little PC fan just for help pulling out any of the heat and it helps with the chimney effect. If we look at the bottom front of the tank down here, you can see all the little vents. So this, this helps bring air in and creates that chimney effect that goes all the way to the top of the tank and then out my fan at the top of the cabinet ultimately. Now inside of those, I, I also took this apart and added more of that mosquito nocea mesh. And this is to kind of fruit fly proof it to make sure none of the little guys can escape out of there. There was also a tiny little gap in the corner of the glass, so I did add a little bit of silicone just to fill out that little tiny gap, again to make sure it's kind of fruit fly proof. Down below the tank we have our bulkhead that drains into two acrylic 5 gallon containers. Now these are saltwater aquarium dosing containers and these work very well for this purpose. Um, one of them is for the drainage for the tank, you can see that nice lovely tannin color from all the water seeping through the substrate. And the next one over is our RODI, and this is what feeds the misting system. And to the right, I have all my fruit fly cultures. So I make one of these a week, and it basically is my endless source of fruit flies to feed the frogs. So if you culture your own flies, it's actually pretty dang easy. And yeah, basically super duper cheap way to feed them. Now looking at the back, at the, I got little power bar mounted, and this is for the lights, the fans, and the misting system. Now that we covered all the hardware, it's time to talk about the actual inhabitants. The, the enclosure itself is 24 by 18 by 36, so it's a fairly tall enclosure and it's actually a really nice size. So I started out by plants. Um, now if you know me, I mainly into salt water and plants are almost like Latin corals. There's so many different ones and there's kind of like easy ones. You got your advanced plants which are kind of like equivalent to acros or SPS in reef tank world. Now, majority of the plants that I have in here are from Peru or Ecuador and different kind of tropical plants. I've really been digging the jewel orchids as well lately. I think they're super cool. And one of the other favorites in here is probably the bromeliads. They're just really cool epidite plants that get most of their moisture from the air. I planted the tank and probably had it just kind of settle in for about a month before I actually added the frogs. And that kind of gave time for everything to settle in, start growing, and kind of establish itself. Um, the substrate I used was called an ABG mix, or a DIY kind of revivative of it. So it's the same general concept, but I may have subbed in a few things. Um, so that was pretty easy to do. Uh, the plants I got from a few different places, and it literally spent a good month or so just kind of collecting them and building them up. But I do think having this live plant is that terrarium vibe adds a really cool aspect to it. And it just looks that much better once you actually add the frogs. Now to the frogs, these guys are Dendrobates aratus el cope. Um, super cool frogs, they're like a tealy blue color. Some are a little more greeny, some are more bluey. Um, they're fairly bold frogs. I have six of them that I added and I usually at any one time I look at the tank, I'll usually see at least three of them. Um, so for the most part, I'd consider them fairly bold and they're definitely climbers. They make full use of my tree. Now another big consideration on why I picked these guys where they have a very quiet call. Now some frogs can be incredibly loud, like you would be able to hear them down the hall, you know, across the house. For these guys, I have not heard a single peep of them, so they have an extremely quiet call, which for me, you know, live streaming, working everything else and was right beside my desk was an important consideration. Uh, now another big thing with these guys is they can be kept in groups. Lots of frogs like Tinctoris can only be kept in a pair, um, where I wanted a bunch of frogs in my tank, so being able to have six of them I think is super cool. Now one of the funnest parts of adding frogs is obviously feeding them. Um, I, the part that intimidated me the most when I was getting started was really just culturing the fruit flies. Um, but after a couple batches I realized it's really not that hard. I have been using what's called Heidi Eye and they take about 20 days until they really take off. Then you get about a week of producing, and after that your culture is pretty much done. So what I've done is I just create a new culture every single week, so every Friday I just make a new culture, and then you know a month later that culture's done, you always have a fresh culture to last you for that week. And you're probably into it for like a dollar or so a culture, so it's super cheap. Um, you know, you're spending five, six bucks a month, ten dollars max, depending which to feed these guys ongoing, which is super cheap for a pet. 
uh, super active and they kind of crack me up like sometimes I'll be just working at my desk and I'll just see the streak out of the corner of my eye and there'll be a frog leaping across the tank um, so they definitely crack me up they're super comical you know I'll be sitting here and they'll be up against the glass be like hey what's going on out there what's up buddy so definitely love the frogs I think they're super cool and I really love the contrast of like that warm kind of light planted jungle rainforest vibe you know opposing the other end of the spectrum which is my you know heavy bluey kind of tropical reef on the other side of my desk so I think the contrast is actually super cool now overall I would say poison dart frogs are actually pretty dang easy now don't worry they are not actually poisonous so you don't really have to worry about having them in your home uh, they get their poison from their dieted jungle bugs and since we don't have jungle bugs they don't have the poison so they're relatively harmless um, that being said they're kind of like a fish in a way where they're more to watch them and not really to handle them. Their skin will absorb whatever they come in contact with. So if you have lotions or sanitizer stuff on your hands, it can be absorbed through their skin, which of course is bad for the frogs. So you really want to minimize handling them. I mean, if one jumped out, you probably would want to get them back and put them back in the tank fairly quickly because they would probably dry out outside the enclosure. Um, I keep my tank at around 70 to 90 percent humidity um, and right now I have my misters kicking on at 4 a.m 8 a.m noon 4 p.m 8 p.m so in each time they kick on for roughly 20 seconds so it's a good chunk of misting and it keeps the humidity at a nice range keeps all the plants everything watered and everything seems pretty happy inside now I did mention earlier that I added a fan to the closure and that was a big thing for me I've seen lots of people's other vivariums where the whole thing's just like misty and you can't see inside where I want to be able to see these amazing creatures at all times. So having a small little PC fan inside makes a huge difference keeping your glass crystal clear. Now from having my reef tanks, I already had an RODI system in the room. So all I did is split it off so that when it tops off my tanks RODI, it also tops off the vivarium RODI. So that made it super duper easy. Realistically, the only effort that this tank is, is feeding it every other day. So very low maintenance, very easy. And eventually I'll just spend a little time here and there trimming plants just to make sure it doesn't get overgrown. But aside from that, I'd say it's a super duper easy project. And if you're already into reef tanks, it's really easy transition to get into dart frogs. Now I actually do have another enclosure that leaps at me. So a huge shout out and thanks to leap. Um, I haven't set it up yet. I'm still debating what goes inside of it. If my frogs make little frog babies at some point, I'll probably use it for that. Otherwise, I've been debating possibly a little gecko or something, but I'm still debating. So there'll probably be another future video on another build once I decide on the long-term purpose of that one. So yeah, if you guys are thinking about dart frogs, they're super cool. And I feel for whatever reason, they seem to really line up with reef tanks and reef keepers. So if you have some, let me know in the comments below, or if you want to learn more about them, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll probably do the odd random video on them because it's my other little side hobby now, and I think they're super cool. But the vivarium is probably two or three months old now. Things are growing in, the frogs are super happy, and I'm absolutely loving it. All right, guys, as always, if you enjoyed this, be sure to hit that like button. If you're new, make sure you subscribe. And if you want to see more content like this, be sure to let me know in the comments below.